Hi, my dear students, it's Miss Bridger. I'm back again with a new topic, and I hope that you're all doing fine. So the topic that we're talking about today is called matter and energy. Please stay tuned with me, and if you want to open your book, open your books on page 232. So, matter and energy. I'm pretty sure from the very start of your morning, when you wake up, when you go down to the kitchen, when you go play with your little brother or little sister, when you try to have games with a pet that you have or try anything at home, all these things that you're doing, they're called activities. And in order to do those activities, you need energy. So what's energy? Energy is the ability to do work or to cause a change. For example, if you're trying to pull your little brother in a small little car down the hallway, you need to have energy. Sometimes when you're really hungry, you, you'll be like, I don't have any energy. I can't do that thing. That's because you need energy for almost all the activities that you do daily. And if you look at the picture, we have two types of energy. We have kinetic energy and we have potential energy. Luckily, your book is only talking about the kinetic energy, but I'm just going to give you a slight, a slight tiny information about the potential one. Even though that I'm going to give you a video to see by Dr. Beinkos, but the difference between kinetic energy and potential energy is that kinetic energy is the energy of motion, but potential energy is the energy stored inside the matter or inside the object. For example, if there's a tree, if there's an apple tree and there's an apple hanging in there, the apple is storing the energy that they have inside them. But if I'm trying to pull that apple and take it down, I'm going to, well, don't do this. It's really bad. I don't recommend this, but I'm just saying it. If I try to kick the tree, the apple is going to fall down to earth, right? So this means that the apple was storing a type of energy inside itself. Now, this kinetic energy is very common between the particles of matter. As we said that we have three types of matter, we have solid, we have liquid, and we have gas, right? So, the particles of solid, they move just a tiny little bit, okay? That's too small and it's too little that you can't even feel them. They just move up and down without you even feeling them. But the particles of liquid is kind of different because they have small amount of space between them. So they can move past each other. But the particles of gas, because they have a huge amount of space between them, they can move in all the other directions. Now, this kinetic energy between the particles of matter is called thermal energy or in another name, we can say that it's called the heat energy. Thermal energy means heat energy. Okay, now for this new slide, I'm going to talk about the difference between temperature and thermal energy, both of them together. So as you can see, I wrote temperature is the measure of the average energy of motion of the particles in a matter but thermal energy is the total energy of motion. So if you look at this small tiny picture I have up here, which is written lessons and marked on it, you're probably going to be a little surprised. So what does this have to do with science? We're going to, we're going to act like these lessons I have up here are like the particles I have in a matter, okay? So temperature is the measure of the average energy of motion of the particles. So imagine that each that you have here, particle, science is a particle. You have a particle named math, you have a particle named English, you have a particle named Kurdish and Arabic, okay? So how am I going to find the temperature? I'm going to sum all these numbers right here, the 99, the 96, the hundreds, and the 90. I'm going to sum them all then I'm going to divide them by the number of the particles that I have up there, which in our case is five. I have science, I have math, I have English, Kurdish, and Arabic. I'm going to divide the number I have by summing all the marks, and then I'm going to divide them by five. This is called the average. And I'm pretty sure Ms. Chan talked about this in a topic called mean. Yes, you have it in mathematics. So 
temperature is like this. Temperature, I'm going to measure the average energy, meaning I'm going to sum all the parts I have in a matter, then I'm going to divide them by the number of the particles I have. But thermal energy is different. Thermal energy is going to sum them all up and then I'm just going to leave it right there without dividing them. So it's like I'm going to find the mean for the temperature, but I'm not going to find the mean for the thermal energy. So the difference between temperature and thermal energy is that temperature is the measure of the average energy of motion of the particles. So I'm going to sum all the particles and then I'm going to divide them by the number of the particles that I have. But thermal energy is going to sum them all up without even dividing them by the number of the particles. So as you can see, I have the average here, which is 97. I summed 99, 96, 100, the other 100, and then the 90. And then I divided them by 5 and I got 97. But for the thermal energy, I just summed the science, the math, English, Kurdish, and Arabic. And I just left it there. The total was 485. And we also talked about how we can measure temperature. Uh, you guys remember we talked about thermometer and even in class I brought the thermometer with me and the cold and the hot water. Do you guys remember? Yeah, let's have a quick flashback. I was having my container. It was a really hot water. Then I put it inside the flask and the thermometer did its work. So listen up. Now... Thermal energy, as I mentioned in the first slide, we can say it's called heat energy as well, right? So, usually when we try to burn something, two things are released from it, energy and light. It gives us energy, as in heat, and also gives us light. For example, if you look at that picture that you have on the slide, you can see that I'm trying to burn something, and that fire is going to give me energy, for example, I feel really cold, I'm going to go next to the fire and I'm going to get warmed. But it also gives us light. Imagine that you're in a forest and you just burned some woods. You have a fire there. You can see your surroundings because of that fire, right? So we're trying to burn materials and any material that can burn is called fuel. So fuel is any material that can burn. People back in the days when technology didn't exist, they used wood in order to burn or to make a fire. Like I'm pretty sure you might have seen it in the old movies. They tried to light up a fire by using two woods and by like pressing them against each other and like passing them against and next to each other. So wood is an example of the fuel or maybe the first material that people used as a fuel. Why is it very important? Even till this very moment that I'm talking, a lot of people count on the wood. That's because wood contains a substance called carbon. And this carbon, it's going to mix up or it's going to combine with an oxygen that we have in the air and together they will form carbon dioxide. And this carbon dioxide can be used by the plants. Remember, we said that plants breathe in carbon dioxide and breathe out oxygen. So they breathe that gas that's bad for us, but they give us a really fresh oxygen. So usually when woods are burned, they release carbon dioxide and the carbon dioxide is taken up by the plants and the plants are going to give us oxygen. So solar energy. Solar energy is light, heat, and other forms of energy that's given off by who? By the sun. Solar energy can be collected and used to heat up buildings and to make electricity and much more things. If you look at this picture right here, okay, we have solar panels. And I think that most of you have done this for your science projects, even this year and last year as well. You guys had... A small solar panel and then you used it next to the window so you can collect as much as sunlight as you want then you can actually work something with it so solar panels work like this 
they put it some uh, some big companies and some big buildings they use these solar panels because first it's very friendly to the environment they use it and they put it up their roof they take the sunlight from the sun and they give it off by electricity at night you can use this electricity for so many things now just like in the picture you can see that the sunlight is giving heat and energy to the solar panel and the solar panel is going to change it into electricity and so on and we should also note that the sun is the source of most energy on earth so most of the energy that we get is probably from the sun okay guys we have as usual we have some questions down the paragraphs that we have in each page you have the answers here but please try to do it yourself before looking at the answers i also have the lesson review up here so please try your best before looking at the answers because this way okay so we have learned so we have learned about heat we've learned about energy we have learned about thermal energy heat energy now, let's see how this thermal energy can be transferred. First, heat is a form of energy. Heat flows from hot objects to cool objects. It flows from one object to another because of their different temperatures. So now we know that if two materials have two different temperatures, they can or the heat can be transferred from one object to another. Thermal energy can be transferred in three ways. The first one is conduction, the second one is convection, the third one is radiation. When does conduction happen? Conduction happens when the particles start bumping into each other. So, imagine that you are trying to boil some water in a kettle. So, as you start to feel the water boiling, you can also feel that the kettle is being really hot. So you have to have a piece of cloth in order to take it off, right? This means that the, the heat energy from the boiled water transferred to the kettle and made the kettle very hot, right? Just so you know, we have a little tiny information here too. Some matters can't transfer this heat energy, but some matters can. The, mat the matters that cannot transfer the heat energy or the thermal energy, they are called insulators. But those that can transfer thermal energy or heat energy, they're called conductors. Does this ring a bell to you? Yeah, last year we talked about conductors and insulators, remember? So if you look at this green picture right over here, you can see the difference between conductors and insulators. We have some matters that can conduct heat, meaning they can transfer heat very good. And we also have some matters that cannot transfer heat. Now convection and radiation. As we all knew, the conduction was different. Conduction was when the particles were bumping into each other, meaning by touching, okay? The particles were touching each other. But for convection is different. This happens when the energy transfers from liquid and gas. So imagine um, your boiling water. Okay, we're, we're going to stick with the boiled water. Your boiling water and you try, well, don't try this at home unless you have a grown-up with you. When you boil water, you have gas coming up as an evaporation, right? Well, if this time you saw your mom, your dad, or any of the family members, a grown-up, doing this, go next to the kettle of water or next to the boiled water. Try putting your hands over the gas. Not inside the water, no, but over the gas. Just try to feel the heat. You can see that the air around the boiled water is becoming really hot. This is called convection, which is also another way of transferring energy. The energy from the boiled water is being transferred into the air and is going to make the air around it very hot. Another example. Okay, so summer comes and your room is really hot. You have an air conditioner, you have an AC inside your room. What are you going to do? Have you ever wondered how this AC is working? So, the air conditioner is going to 
push that cold air outside it's going to push the cold air outside and this cold air is going to push the warm air up to the ceiling just like you can see on page 239 you can see that those red arrows are the hot air and the cold air is the blue ones so the hot air moves toward the air conditioner because the cold air is going to push it up to the ceiling and then the hot air is going to move towards the air conditioner in the air conditioner the air is going to be cooled then it's going to be sent back out so we can have a cooled room if you open the door of your room an amount of hot air or warm air can come inside and the same process happens over and over again it's like a cycle so we call this a convection current so the cold air is going to push the warm air up to the ceiling next to the air conditioner the air conditioner is going to take in the hot air and then it's going to cool it off and take it back out but if we open the door or if we open the window uh, an amount of warm air can come inside and the same process happens again but with radiation this is different so usually we need um, we need a matter in order to have conduction or convection we need a matter go to page 240 radiation because we need a matter to transfer energy and conduction and convection this is different for radiation radiation can transfer energy through matter or even empty space when I say through matter, I mean by right inside them, right through them. And this radiation comes directly from where? From the sun. This radiation is coming from the sun. That's why we always have to know that the sun is the major source of energy on Earth. So you can feel this radiation by two ways. You can feel the light, right? For example, if it's really sunny, go outside and try looking at the sun. You can see that the light is so strong and intense. You cannot even open your eyes. Your eyes are going to hurt and you're just going to look away. That's one. The second way of you feeling the energy is the, or you can feel the radiation is the heat. When you go out on a sunny day, you can feel your skin burning. You're like, ouch, it hurts, it's burning, right? So imagine how fast this energy can be transferred to you and how you can feel it and how you can react to it. So light and heat are two types of energy that's given out by the sun. Um, and the heat is coming as an infrared radiation. It's a type of radiation that comes from the sun. We can feel it ourselves. We can feel the light as also we can feel the heat so we now should know that the Sun is the major source of radiation on earth just like the others I have all the questions that are under the paragraphs that you have in the books written down here but please 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 try to do it yourself before before going up to the slide and checking them out um we also have the chapter review yes i did the chapter review too but please try to do the chapter review on your own without even trying to look at the slide and last but not least i just want to say that i really miss you guys and i hope that you're all doing very very well please stay safe and please don't neglect these lessons that we're doing for you and I hope that the situation just comes to an end. And that's all. I miss you guys. Bye-bye.